2024 is off to a fiery start. It's about to get even hotter with Phantom Nightmare right around the corner. And once we see Populous and Promethean Princess released into the meta game, the fire is going to be king. So today's video, we're going to go over how to beat the Fire King deck. So let's get right into the video. Now to start things off, we always have to know thy enemy. So what is it to be expecting from the Fire King matchup? Fire King is renowned for their ability to destroy their own cards and then actually activate those destroyed cards in the graveyard to summon out multiple resources and even boss monsters from their main deck. And then much like other top decks, we're actually seeing them utilize the Snake Eye Engine with Populous, Ash, even the original Sinful Spoils and Diabell Start. And then between the easy level one, rank one, link one package, as well as the versatility from the Fire King engine, we're actually seeing them go into quite the high class extra deck with things like Grunix Eternity, Promethean Princess, which has just been putting in insane work over in the OCG, and then even cards like SP Little Knight being able to utilize the Heat of the Fire Charmer to go into that, as well as Decode Talker Heat Soul being able to go into that off of the Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf package. Since Fire Kings have already made a splash in the meta game even before all this new support has been released to them it is a no-brainer that this deck is going to be taking it over the top once this set is released and we're actually expected to see even more support flow to the tcg with links such as flame tongue the blazing magical blade which is another fire support card is set for the release at some point in the future of the tcg now that is the fire king deck and kind of what to be expecting when you're going to be going against that matchup but most importantly what are we going to be using to beat fire kings now the first thing we're going to be going over are cards we're using when we're going first. And now, given that we are in a graveyard format, cards like Abyss Dweller and Gravekeeper's Inscription are going to be huge staples going into this format. Abyss Dweller, just time and time again, seeing insane play, especially when we saw the tier elements matchup. But again, Abyss Dweller is making quite the return, given that almost every deck in this format is going to be graveyard oriented and not only is it going to block him for one turn but we normally get two uses out of the abyss dweller and then again following suit gravekeeper's inscription is a card we've been screaming from the mountaintops about on this channel and over in the ocg we're seeing it utilized more now than ever before and again that's because gravekeeper's inscription just completely shuts your opponent out of certain graveyard utilities whether it's special summons or graveyard effects in general we're seeing gravekeeper's inscription just increase not only in value but playability and then kind of following suit with the shutting down of the graveyard, we're actually going to be seeing a soul drain being able to be utilized against the Fire King matchup. But as always, we do say be careful when using the continuous traps because if they're popped, you know, they're back in the game again. And now another way players have actually been going against this deck is just hitting out the spell cards. In some ways, players are doing that is utilizing cards like Cosmic Cyclone against their field spell Fire King Island. The island actually has a bunch of utility in the deck, and then their Sanctuary actually protects the island from destruction effects. So going into that Cosmic Cyclone, being able to banish the Fire King Island under the Sanctuary is something that the players are actually opting into, and you will still get the board wipe effect by getting rid of the Fire King Island, so do be careful on that, but that can also be utilized in a positive nature. And then on top of banishing the Fire King Island, a lot of players are just going into shutting them out of spell cards altogether. Rather, that's with Anti-Spell Fragrance, which has been seeing a tremendous amount of playability over in the OCG recently and should be a surprise to no one after we saw what Imperial Order did and then we can actually see playability in cards like Secret Village of the Spellcasters because not only are you able to shut your opponent out of spell cards but a lot of decks are actually utilizing spellcasters given that they're playing the Sinful Spoils Diabell Star package and the Black Witch as a spellcaster. Then we're also seeing since the Fire King deck actually summons out so many monsters, half the time even just Snake Eye monsters, you can utilize cards like Summon Limit against this deck to essentially shut them into their lower monsters. Very rarely are they going to be able to snowball into higher monsters without summoning more than two or three times previously in that turn. So Summon Limit might be just a simple activation and shutdown of the Fire King deck. Some more Floodgate-like abilities, and again, because they are graveyard decks, Macrocosmos and Defissure of course have their time to shine against the Fire King build. And as always, if you're able to keep the Defissure or the Macro up against the deck, 
they are definitely shut out of the game because without that graveyard, their effects are null and void. And now a few techie cards if you want to get a little spicy against the Fire King builds are things such as Shared to Ride. It's kind of like a makeshift max C. We know they add cards from the deck and graveyard to their hand. So cards like Shared to Ride can actually give you an insane amount of value, especially if you're able to set this card leading up into their first turn. Now the next one's a little bit of a crazy one. We've actually been seeing players like Mr. Kodak and a few others in the community talk about my body as a shield. Now my body will prevent a monster effect that destroys a monster on the board and that can be very useful and stunning i'm not too sure how well that will stretch out in the overall metagame but my body as a show is definitely a card that some players have been talking about in the community and then the last one's an actually uh, quite the interesting one and that is big burn now big burn is a trap card a lot of players are probably unfamiliar with but once a monster in the graveyard is targeted, you flip up Big Burn, and then it will remove from play all monsters in both players' graveyard. So if you can set this turn one and get them to load up a little bit of utility in the graveyard and flip the Big Burn upon one of their targeting of the grave effects, this will shut them out of the game right then and there. So Big Burn is a card to be looking out for when you're going against all these graveyard decks like Fire King. And guys, that is going first against them, but what do we use when we're going second? And before we get into that, if you are getting anything from the video or you keep fighting your way back to the channel, please do smash that subscribe. And for those that already have, share the video to your friends, but let's get right back to the content. Now, going first and setting up floodgates, very easy to do, but what do we do when the Fire Kings go first? And what a lot of players have been opting for is just really well-placed hand traps. Now, since we're seeing the Fire Kings add to the hand, especially with uses like Snake Eye and Bonfire, cards like Drone Lockbird are a staple against the Fire King matchup. If you are able to drill them off that initial add, they are almost guaranteed dead in the water. Without multiple ways to add cards from the deck to the hand, the Fire Kings really do have a little bit of a weaker start, especially with that Snake Eye combo. And now following suit with that, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring is another amazing card against that Fire King matchup. But unlike Droll, you can only get one use out of the Ash, so it's very important of where you Ash in their combo line. And a lot of players have agreed that Ashing the Ponyx is not a good idea, and a lot of times it's actually a bait for the Ash Blossom. So a lot of players have been opting into Ash Blossoming the Fire King Island or the Garunix altogether to get that full use and interruption out of the Ash Blossom. And again, if there's anything you'd like to Ash in this matchup, do comment it down below because we want to get the best knowledge to the player base. And then aside from simple disruptions, we actually have total wipeouts with cards like Nibiru actually being game-breaking against this matchup. We know, especially with the Snake Eye versions, that Fire Kings will summon way more than five times a turn. And if you're able to Nibiru before they summon out any of their monster negates, like the High Avatar Arvada, then Nibiru will definitely be a game blowout going against the deck and then since they are summoning so many cards from the extra deck primarily links it is only fair to assume that the fantastical dragon phantasme can see a return to the metagame against the fire king matchup and then since they're summoning out so many links whether it's the hita whether it's the salomon greats or even the prominence princess you're able to summon out the fantastical dragon get some draw, add some consistency to your hand, and then you actually can negate them from their targeting destruction with the Fantastical Dragon's effect. So Phantasme not only adds cards to your hand, helping you refresh your hand a little bit, but it does keep some of their high destructive abilities at bay like the Prominence Princess. So cards like the Fantastical Dragon, definitely worth putting in the extra deck, especially going into this fire metagame. And now a lot of these are really good hand traps, but it is important to be able to get them off before they put up monster negates like the high avatar arvada which can actually negate your hand traps so players are actually opting into cards like infinite impermanence but this is actually a debated topic since impermanence does target when you activate this will actually allow the fire king player to use some of their quick effects to pop their monster that would be getting impermanent and essentially allow them to play out of that negate but if you are going to opt into the impermanence, I do suggest that you are keeping it for those monster negates like the High Avatar Arvada, so then your other hand traps are even more impactful. And now again, since we are in a graveyard format, cards like Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion are going to be seeing a huge increase in playability, and they already have. 
So with Ghost Spell already being good against other cards in the metagame, it is kind of a no-brainer to be potentially fitting this into the side deck to go against Fire Kings as well. And then it is also noted that a lot of players are saying, since there are so many things to hit with the Ghost Spell, if you potentially can hit the Kirin, do so, because that adds a bunch of utility to their deck. But again, the Ghost Bow can hit a bunch of stuff against the Fire Kings. And as always, if you're able to play the King of Graveyard formats, play Dimension Shifter. Yep, if you're able to, this will completely decimate their first turn, kind of shut them out altogether. Dimension Shifter just going to be putting in that overall amazing work against the deck. But if you're not able to Shifter, cards like DD Crow are a fair alternative. Yes, they don't banish all the cards. It's not like as good as a big burn, but if you're able to hit out their single targets like the Prominence Princess, maybe hit out a Diabelsaur, maybe hit out things like the Grunix. These single targets are decent things. Maybe the Ponix is what you want to hit, but DD Crow can still put in quite the amount of work like the Ghost Spell in these matchups, and you can actually fizzle a bunch of their abilities with that banish ability. And now to kind of wrap the last couple cards on the going second aspect, is cards such as Soul Release. And now Soul Release has been seeing a ton of hype in the TCG because unlike DD Crow, this one will banish multiple targets of your choosing. So if you're going second and your opponent has already played up their Fire King engine, Snake Eye engine, they're going to have multiple targets in their graveyard that are still very live and active on their follow-up play. And being able to banish these completely from the graveyard will make sure you don't have to deal with them on the following turn. And even some of their abilities are useful during your turn as well. So being able to rid them from the graveyard or force them to use some of the quick effects is why Soul Release is being seeing a lot of play in the metagame. So Soul Release, definitely a card to be considering against Fire Kings as well as other matchups in this metagame. And then players are actually noting Soul Release is a normal spell. So cards like Triple Tactics Thrust are going to be even more important against the Fire King matchup. And then it is also useful to note, since a majority of their Fire King abilities are going to be activating during your standby phase as forced activations, Thrust is almost always live against the Fire King matchup. So if you're able to put in normal spells like Soul Release or even Evenly Matched, those are all amazing cards going against the Fire King matchup. Because again, once they set up a board, if you're able to get off a card like Evenly Matched, banish their board face down, and even a bunch of their effects that would normally go off if their cards are destroyed simply are not going off, or even if they chain to them, it won't lead to any beneficial plays. Evenly Matched and Thrust are two cards that are going to be insane against your Fire King matchup. I'd like to say some of the most notable cards on today's list are things such as Abyss Dweller, we've got the Anti-Spell Fragrance, even things like Gravekeeper's Inscription are all insane cards when you're going first against them. And again, once you're going second, those hand traps like Drone Lockbird, Ash Blossom, even Nibiru are going to be seeing tons of play against the Fire King matchup. And of course, if you're able to utilize things like the Soul Release or the Evenly Match with that Thrust combo, you are in it to win it. And guys, that is how we beat the Fire King matchup. But if I did not cover anything you are using or utilizing against that deck, do comment it down below. We like to see what other players are actually using against these meta decks. And if you enjoyed the video or keep finding your way back to the channel, please do drop that subscribe. We're trying to get the numbers up. And if you already have, do share the video with your friends so we can get the word out. But as always, we're gonna have more videos flashing up. And most importantly, you stay safe, have a good night, and suck it, nerds.